of this project is to provide uh, a set of technologies and in the short term also devices and tools for a specific approach to personalized medicine. In particular, as you, as you know, uh, this is a very hot field and uh, there are different approaches to be able to provide uh, the right dose or, doge or dosage of a drug to a patient uh, since different patients react in a very different ways to, uh, to the same drug dose. So uh, it, uh, um, a widespread uh, um, uh, method is actually based uh, on what is called pharmacogenetics. So uh, basically try to see uh, the characteristic, to identify the characteristic in the genome of one patient and to try to, uh, uh, by knowing how these characteristics are, are linked to a certain reaction to a drug, to try to adapt the dosage accordingly. But actually it is well known that this method is limited by the fact that uh, uh, they actually, this kind of the method doesn't take into account a lot of phenotype uh, uh, elements and uh, uh, actually uh, also all the um, other metabolism uh, characteristics. While uh, this approach that actually uh, pharmacology is pursuing is based on pharmacokinetics and also on pharmacodynamics that is a little bit different. And in fact it looks directly to uh, the drug concentration in blood after a certain intake. So this means that it looks directly on how the body metabolizes the drug and what is the actually concentration outcome. Uh, so this is pharmacokinetics. Pharmacodynamics, uh, it goes a little bit uh, uh, farther and we are also interested in this approach. And it looks how this concentration then translates into an effect. And the effect is uh, uh, underlined by certain biomarkers. So by measuring the drug concentration and in the future also the concentration of uh, um, suitable biomarkers, it will be possible to have a pretty uh, nice idea on how the patient is reacting in real time. So the approach based on pharmacokinetics actually uh, says that uh, if we consider the drug concentration in blood of a patient over time, after several excessive, uh, uh, excessive intakes, you, can, you should actually be able to stay in a certain range of concentration that is an effective concentration with no adverse uh, effects. But this is an average curve in the population. Of course, what you, have, what you can have is something very different at a given point in time. So this is because actually the typical pharmacokinetic curve of this patient is different from the average. So what is, it is needed to be done is to adapt the dosage in a way to come back to a suitable, uh, a suitable uh, concentration in blood. So um, we, we have a number of scientific challenges, of course, uh, about those computing first, second, about how to measure this drug concentration at the point of care, and also how to automate safely this procedure. Uh, concerning those computing and adjustment, let me start with uh, where actually this process started a few years ago. It was uh, uh, thanks to a meeting that uh, I had with uh, Professor Thierry Buclan at CHUV when he, um, he opened me the, this, this word of pharmacokinetics. This is the routine of what is done, for, for instance, for a, a post-transplant uh, uh, patient, but uh, it also starts to be quite important for some HIV therapies and for anti-cancer therapies. But the problem is that uh, so far it is a little cumbersome as a procedure since the practitioner to take a blood test, send the test to the shoe. The shoe does the drug measurement and use the algorithm and provide back a dose adjustment. So this, all this part is, is pretty cumbersome. In fact, they have this algorithm that are, uh, that are quite complex and uh, they uh, you need really um, uh, trained people to, uh, to use them. So this, this is based on Bayesian algorithm and they are still uh, working on these population approaches uh, also sustained by this project. So if you have uh, basically, as we said, a range in which you should follow and which the average population with, with the fall uh, after a certain dosage, you, will, uh, you can actually have somebody that doesn't fall anymore in this average and that would need uh, a dose adjustment to be able to fall back to the right, uh, to the right position. Let's move to the second uh, scientific uh, challenge. That is, so now that we have a tool, a software tool, that allow uh, the practitioner, starting from a drug concentration and databases, to provide a dose adjustment, let's see how to measure the drug concentration directly uh, at, the at the MD uh, cabinet. 
So um, at present, uh, this kind of drug measurement are done actually in big labs, uh, in particular in, uh, in, uh, uh, in Switzerland, in that, yeah, it's done I think at SHUV and maybe in another hospital only. And they, it is based on uh, either mass spectrometry, uh, either mass spectrometry or, uh, uh, or, or enzyme immunoassay. Uh, so in case of mass spectrometry, of course, uh, the point is that this cannot be a point of cure technique. It's label free, uh, it's very precise, but uh, it's, not a, a it's not a point of cure technique. So the solution that we propose actually is uh, based on uh, different molecules, so not on antibodies, but on aptamers, and it's based on a biochip, so uh, a microfluidic system um, that would uh, perform a surface uh, sensing of the drug. In particular, uh, the very si in this very simple uh, representation, um, the uh, probe molecules, so there's chains that you can see here in blue, they will actually capture the drug molecules uh, that are in a flow. So from the blood sample, uh, of course, drug will be, uh, the, 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 the plasma will be um, filtered and it will, uh, uh, it will contain, the sample will contain uh, the, a certain concentration of drug, typically in the order of 10, 100 uh, nanomolar. Uh, and uh, so the sensor will uh, actually target uh, the a change, an intrinsic change here at the interface and provide uh, a solution. So uh, the, first, uh, mm, the first challenge for this approach is to select this probe. These probes do not exist. These are called aptamers. Uh, they are uh, oligonucleotide chains and they change conformation upon binding. So they can be selected, so that there's a sequence of DNA can be selected in a way to be very specific to a given molecule. But actually for the, for the molecules we are interested in, they, these, these aptamers do not exist. So we actually uh, um, we, uh, developed a selection system that is targeted specifically to uh, this kind of sensing approach. In particular, by using magnetic beads, that are um, linked to uh, primers, we uh, consider a library, so a set of uh, a high number of oligonucleotide sequences randomly generated. These sequences, when in contact with the sample with uh, the, 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 the drugs, are released when the specific sequence is actually uh, um, complementary or can recognize uh, the drug. So wha when we release it, uh, it is possible to separate the beads from the oligonucleotides and to take the uh, eluted part of this, uh, of this sample. So we perform our uh, sensing first on a commercial, on a commercial system that is uh, called the Surface Plasma Resonance System, SPR from Biacore in particular, that is a surface sensor, so we can actually prove the possibility of this detection uh, on surface with our aptamers. Uh, we want to do, of course, point of care sensors. So we are working on two techniques. Uh, one is a kind of um, novel approach for SPR that is called transmission SPR and uh, it's based on the, f on, the um, on the use of nano, um, nano island of gold that uh, provide a transparent uh, sample and uh, so we immobilize we're working at present on the immobilization of these aptamer um, molecules on the on this surface in the meantime we developed uh, a, a very small system uh, point of care system that uh, was able to uh, detect the shift in a plasmon peak um, with an accuracy of one nanometer. That is actually uh, uh, definitely um, comparable to what uh, uh, also SPR is able to provide. We are also working on the impedance uh, uh, technique for this drug detection. So, uh, so far we, we focused on, uh, um, on a technique on different techniques to uh, perform microelectrodes on chip and in particular to provide a certain reliability during sensing. So I would like to thank you for your attention and of course uh, I will be happy to answer two questions.